So, in fact, welcome again. And let me introduce tonight's guest. Tonight's guest is Katarina Koldina from Stillsoft. She's joining us tonight from Belarus. So we are truly international um, this week. And she will tell us or show us how to organize an effective onboarding process in Confluence. And with that, Katarina, welcome again. Thank you for being here and uh, over to you and your presentation. Thank you, Jörg. Yeah, so my name is Katrina and I'm a product owner with Stillsoft. Okay, let me set things up real fast. Okay. All right. So I'm sharing my screen now. So you should be able to see it now. Yes, looks good. All right, perfect. So thank you for having me. Um, my name is Katerina. I'm a product owner with Stillsoft. And uh, today our topic is organizing an effective onboarding uh, process in Confluence. And before we get started, uh, like you already mentioned, we have the chat and we have the QA section. So I encourage you to use that and uh, let us know what brought you here, uh, what you're interested in in the topic, what challenges you face, and uh, what you need help with. It would be really nice if you mentioned where you are at uh, with your onboarding process in general, whether it's already well established and organized and you have some best practices and experience to share, or you're just uh, starting with this adventure and really looking for some solutions. So uh, that would be very valuable for everybody who is joining today and the others uh, watching the recording later. Okay, so um, let's get it going. Uh, to begin with a few words about where I come from, about Stillsoft. Uh, we're a small team of uh, 20 people, about that, uh, based in Belarus. Uh, we're making apps for Confluence Jira in Bitbucket since 2010. And um, that's what we are specializing on. Um, still soft is Platinum Top Vendor and Silver Solution Partner. We're based in Belarus, so if you're wondering about my accent, it's Russian uh, with the touch of American because of my history. Well, anyway, anyway um, just um, if you, a little introduction. Uh, about our apps. People usually know us uh, uh, when, when they hear about table filtering charts for Confluence or some graphs for Bitbucket or uh, smart attachments for Jira. Okay, um, as we're moving towards the actual topic, uh, I, I, I would like to say that onboarding is uh, a genuine process which is cooperation of many teams including IT teams, HR departments, and uh, the functional team of the new, uh, the, the new coming person. Uh, well, uh, and it takes a lot of effort uh, to coordinate everything. Uh, and that's why it's such a big challenge, especially when we're now um, working remotely. And uh, my uh, talk today will be mostly about universal things, something that you can do not only during this lockdown, but the things that will still be applicable after everything settles down, settles down and we get back to like normal life. However, I will also have a few things uh, um, regarding like digital onboarding. So some suggestions and tips that you I can have as a takeaway. Um, and I would like to begin with a with a, such an idea of a framework. And here you have a link, and I will also share some other links uh, after the talk. So get back to the, um, to the like session page and uh, go through the links. There'll be some really valuable information there. So uh, this is the link to the blog post about uh, uh, a 90-day plan that Atlassian usually do uh, with the new people who are coming for them. So it's a framework and here it's a great suggestion. It doesn't have to be the same thing for you, but uh, the idea of a framework is something that is really helpful 
um, something that you can create for your uh, team, for your company, based on your needs and goals, and then share with everybody internally so that uh, all the people are on the same page and they know what uh, the process looks like and where they need to help. Uh, so here's the like brief uh, introduction of the idea that Atlassian use. But like I said, it can be just uh, the inspiration and you can adjust that based on what you actually need. Um, and here's like a short video showing what in their uh, vision such a plan looks like. So that's basically a template that they reuse every time a new person is joining. And uh, that's the plan for the person. So uh, here they have some goals and milestones. And what I really like there is that the uh, major goal for the first 90 days is not to like get started from day one doing tasks and being productive, but um, get comfortable, familiar with what is expected, how things work, what they think doesn't work, and they can share that feedback, uh, really know all the things that they will need in their future role. So it sets them up for success um, and uh, gives the time and opportunity for people to actually um, get familiar with everything before they start performing. But it doesn't have to be the same way for you because every team is different. And for some people onboarding is um, like a two months process. Others cannot afford that and they have only a week or two. And um, of, of course, it, it really depends, so. Okay. Uh, the talk today is mostly about Confluence and how you can use Confluence for onboarding, on, on uh, organizing everything concerning onboarding inside Confluence. So in this uh, case, Confluence serves as a central place. And I think it's really vital because in such a foundational process as onboarding, you need a one place where everything is tracked and uh, um, you know orchestrated. And based on my opinion, it's like conference is the perfect place for that. Uh, and let's see why. Uh, first of all, in this case, you have both collaboration and onboarding in one place because uh, conference is something that people will go on using and uh, they uh, will have the opportunity to start collaborating with their teammates while they are still in the process of onboarding. And there'll be, you know, this seamless um, uh, period where they, at the same time, just pre-boarding, onboarding, and uh, already working. So they will not have this drastic shift between systems. And of course, there's this uh, um, native Confluence interface that people get familiar with if they didn't use Confluence before. So, um, this really is really helpful because they start using their major system from day one. Another important point is that uh, when you use Confluence, it's filled with some super valuable information, some best practices, description of processes, and where to find what kind of information. And when you have onboarding inside of Confluence, you can take advantage of everything that you created before. And um, here are the few first steps that you can take when you would like to organize uh, onboarding in Confluence. Uh, depending on, on where you are, um, well, the first would be to evaluate the data and the assets that you already have uh, inside Confluence and make a plan of what you need to create. So they'll be part of the information that's already there and that you can use today but uh, there will definitely be some, something lacking, like and that's fine, because onboarding is ongoing process, and uh, uh, you should focus on that and, you know, uh, to contribute a little by little. And when you find all the pieces of information that is useful for onboarding, most likely it will be really in different places, all over the place, you know, in Confluence, in different spaces, on different pages, and the idea is to bring everything together in one place, in one space, and organize it bigger for onboarding. 
Uh, the other point would be to create templates with checklists. So the solution that I'll be sharing today is all about checklists. Checklists for managers, for IT department, HR specialists, and for new hires. So I will show you how you can create such checklists using templates in counselors and then easily reuse them again and again to save your time. And then uh, dashboards so that IT department and HR specialists as well as managers will need. So uh, there'll be a solution with um, some native macros uh, uh, that counselors suggest. Uh, so it's something that you can do today without any apps. And the landing page for new employees, uh, the place where they can come every day, every morning, and uh, so find where they left off. All right, so um, when we're speaking about evaluating and organizing, uh, the idea is that you can create the new space like here on boarding and then uh, not move, but actually reuse the content that you have elsewhere and how you can do that. So you can create the new pages here, but don't copy paste content. You can really benefit from include page macro, for example, which allows you to bring in the data from another host page into this new page uh, and then keep them like mirrors. Uh, when, you, when something is updated on the initial page, the update will be available here as well. So it really saves time and you don't have to keep the documents updated in two places. Okay, and um, the next step would be to create uh, templates with checklists. And let's see how you can do that in Confluence. So um, this is the onboarding space. And then in each space, you have the place where you can create uh, templates. And here's the way that you do that. So you create a new template and you fill it with the content that will be used every time a new, it's just, a new um, like in our case, checklist for an IT specialist is created. So you just give it a name and then you fill it with this content that you need. In this case, we have the page property and the table with the uh, check boxes. So that's how it looks like after it's done. Yeah, so uh, we'll see that in more detail just in a second. Okay, and then uh, we can create a dashboard. This is the dashboard for the uh, HR department, which has the list of uh, all the new hires with their status and the information of what they need for their onboarding. And this uh, button, the onboarding HR checklist. So when everything is set up using templates and some other records that I will show you in a second, you can have a page like that and uh, uh, it will help you automate the process because you can come here, you can click the create uh, button for the onboarding HR checklist and it will trigger the creation of the page from the template. And you don't have to uh, copy paste anything, uh, create the page from scratch Mm, you just fill in what you see there. And it really helps you have the same format for the every uh, checklist so that they are uniform and you can really easily find everything in the checklist. For example, if you have two HR specialists using the same dashboard and they can come to the checklist of their colleague and they can really know where to find information. This is the dashboard under the hood, I would say. Uh, it's really simple. We just have the create from template uh, button, uh, which triggers the creation of the template and the page properties report. So you don't have to really update that table manually. And uh, this is the part of the dashboard. Um, or not, sorry, not the dashboard, but the checklist itself for the HR specialist. And the first part is this page properties part with a table on the inside. And this uh, macro allows us uh, to have this automation. Uh, when, it's, when it's present on the page and then when we refer to that from the dashboard, it really gives us the information automatically. And this is the second part of the checklist for the HR specialist. And it's um, just an example of what you can set up. 
So here on the left, we have the uh, check boxes for the HR specialist uh, to check when they're done with this step. Then they can fill in the date. And uh, uh, these uh, descriptions, they show the step, what they need to do, as well as some assets and hints. For example, here we can have the link to the Google form for a new employee. So um, we just create this checklist and then we have this link at hand. We just copy that and share it with the person. The same as uh, the checklist for the IT department. Uh, when we have somebody new joining the team, we need to uh, let the IT department know that they need the laptop, some accesses uh, to different systems, and, um, and then maybe some training about the uh, products that they'll be using the software. So we need to inform them and uh, you can also use the checklist for that. So using this macro create from template, you will trigger the creation of a checklist for the IT person and then they will be on board with you. All right. Let's move on. And uh, that's an idea of the landing page for, <clears throat> excuse me, for the new employee. So uh, it can be the homepage of the space. So when they click on boarding on this sidebar or when they come to spaces and click on boarding there, they will be directed to this landing page. And here they can find the job role that they have and then go to their area, area of knowledge that they need to learn. Um, here, I would like to show you a few other blueprints or templates that can be used for the actual uh, employees, the new employees that are joining. Besides managers and uh, uh, HR specialists and IT people, uh, we can create such checklists for the new hire, for them to have the process that they need to follow at hand and uh, always there for the reference. Here I have some examples of the checklist for different job roles. And uh, in this case, they're global, but it doesn't really matter. You can set it up on a space level and then you can, do, uh, you can manage them yourself without asking the conference administrator. Uh, but anyway, it's a really great tool because you create it once and then you reuse it as many times as you need. And when you reuse them, you can have the create from template button, the one that I showed you before. For the templates, they will be available in the create menu that you use for creation pages. So when an HR specialist needs to create a checklist for a new hire, they will just go to create, select the job role there, and have the checklist for the person ready. And this checklist will already be pre-filled with all this information that they set up before with the links for the person to go through uh, and read the material. So they, they will have their own page for that. And uh, in addition to that, the manager and the HR specialist, they will have the dashboard, the report like that, where they see all the people that are going through onboarding with um, uh, the dates when they started and completed and the status uh, where they are at. Here's the example of one of the pages that uh, in our case, the Scrum Master would have as part of their onboarding training. So the checklist that I showed you before, it has links to different assets, some documentation that they need to go through, some policies that they need to read, some certifications uh, that, um, um, that they have to go through as well as some training. So uh, training can be organized simply by just creating pages with videos, text, and things like that. Uh, the important point here would be to have it uh, well-structured. So you can have a preset set of pages like the parent page and some child, child pages. And uh, by dividing all the information into chunks and separating that into separate you know, uh, child pages, uh, it will be easier for the person to follow and they will have these links uh, um, where they can move between sub pages. And um, so here's the example of one of those uh, pages of the training. Uh, and uh, the way for the manager to engage the person into the training would be 
to share the page and just uh, type their name, then the new hire will get a notification via email with the landing page of this training with all the steps that they need to follow. So it will be really straightforward. Uh, here's the overview of the benefits and the drawbacks of this approach. So what's good is that it's really easy to set up because uh, all the tools are already there. If you're using Confluence, uh, you, you have all those native macros like page property, page, page property report, create from template, and uh, uh, all the macros that you need for videos and things like that, they come with Confluence. Uh, Page Include allows you to reuse content in different places so you really save time and you don't clutter your confluence. And of course, after everything is set up, you can use that again and again. So it's not a one-time thing, but the effort and the work that you do, it stays uh, there for longer. However, there are some disadvantages such as there is no way to track uh, progress easily because the statuses should be updated manually by employees and the um, uh, managers. And you know, uh, we're all human, we can make mistakes and uh, sometimes people, they don't update the page when they need and then the dashboards, they would be outdated. There are no reports uh, that would be automated and uh, uh, for new hires, it could be difficult uh, to find where they left off. So for example, they have onboarding process, which takes uh, a week or two, and they have like a bunch of pages that they need to go through. And yeah, they are well-structured and well-organized. They know where to come and where to find information, but they really don't remember where they left off, which page, they, which page was uh, the last for them you know, yesterday. Um, and I will show you a few extensions, a few adjustments that you can make uh, to cover those uh, drawbacks. So uh, this one will work if you're already using Jira Service Desk or if you would like to start using that. With um, this uh, tool from Atlassian, you can automate some of the things that you do. So for example, instead of using the Google form for um, you know, uh, learning about the preferences of the uh, new coming person, and as well as uh, fill in the form for the IT department, what they should be ready with, you can set up really easily such a request form. And uh, when you have Jira Service Desk, this template, it comes uh, uh, out of the box. So you just create the new project and then uh, select the template for HR department, and then you'll have it ready. So here you can just click then employee onboarding and then you'll have uh, the uh, fields to fill in and after that there'll be this issue created and it will be assigned automatically to the right person so you don't have to mention anybody you don't have to share the page the the right IT guy or gal uh, will have a notification and they will have this task on their dashboard in Jira service desk so it, it's really straightforward and then if you are not really using Jira Service Desk yourself and you are the manager or the HR person, uh, you can set it up, uh, you know, you can set up the report inside Confluence using the Jira macro. You will just select the name of that project of Jira and then you'll have the report like that on your Confluence page. So when the IT person updates the request, when they um, deliver the laptop or they deliver training, they will um, change the status of that request and you will see this reflected in your report in conference. So it's really handy, yeah. And another approach uh, I would like to show is the one uh, which uses Forces and Quizzes LMS app. That's the app that Stillsoft makes and it's for learning management inside Confluence. There's the landing page of the app on the marketplace. And um, here are the major use cases. Uh, so as you can see, besides onboarding, it's, uh, it, it, it's great for employee education and customer education certification, either internal or external, preparation for external, screening job candidates. So you can set up uh, knowledge tests uh, for your HR people. 
um, to share with the people who are being screened for, for a job role. And here you can enroll people um, who are not your conference users, so you can save on your license. Two others would be tests, like skill and knowledge tests that you can uh, use on different, uh, um, you know, time, at different times uh, in your work life when people wants, want to have a job transfer, uh, promotion, and things like that. And product knowledge tests, which are great for internal use when you have some software and you want to educate your people how to use that, as well as for external use when uh, you have your product and you're selling that and you would like to educate your customers. So that's a brief introduction. And let's see how managers uh, can imp imply, um, apply this app for um, making the onboarding even easier and more straightforward in conference. And like I told you, like the app comes with um, the, the um, capabilities that make it uh, possible to uh, create an LMS, a learning management system in Confluence. So it brings in the features that you need to create courses and quizzes, tests. And here's an example of the course page. So it has some sections and modules, and uh, that's the like general idea that you can create courses for onboarding. One course which is large and um, uh, contains all the information that you need for the person or a combination like series of courses. So um, it's really up to you. Just like with a previous approach when I, the one that I showed you where you just use the native stuff that comes with Confluence, here you can also reuse Confluence content. Uh, it allows you to add uh, existing pages as modules and they are not copied, they are just reused. So they stay where they are, they keep living the, their normal life, they are just associated with the course and will be part of its content when shared. Uh, the course can have tests, quizzes for checking understanding, and I think it's important not just to, you know, um, uh, to check whether the person got it right and then tell them off if they had mistakes, but it's mostly for the new hire themselves. Because I noticed uh, in our team that people, they're really motivated and they read everything uh, when they are just joining the team. But sometimes there's just too much information and uh, there should be the way for them uh, to summarize what they've learned and to give them, for us to give them feedback if they didn't catch something. Maybe there was uh, something missing on the page uh, in the module. Or maybe it wasn't clear enough. So it's a great way uh, for the person to see whether they understood all the basics and everything is clear or not. And I think it's really important to have some sort of curation because uh, uh, during the first weeks, months, you are overloaded with all the data, with all the information about processes and things like that. So. Uh, every now and then, if you send a, a quiz, um, a simple quiz about the material that the person studied before on day one, day two, it will really help them revise the information and uh, uh, keep, it, keep all the important things in, the, the, in their head. This is the uh, report of the course. So he, that's the automation that you have. When you're using courses, you don't have to create the report yourself. You don't have to update that. It's done automatically. And here you can come and track where the person is and they're onboarding how they did with their tests and when they finished, how much time it took for them. Um, when you need to engage somebody in the new course, uh, when they are during the onboarding, you can enroll the person via email. So you just type their email address, username or group name, and then they will be, um, they will receive a notification. Another option would be to use the, the self-enrollment option. You can add a course into learning and then the people will come there, click enroll, and uh, they will be taken to the course automatically. And that's how uh, new employees experience onboarding when they're using courses and quizzes LMS app. So they get a notification about the course that they need to take for onboarding via email. And or they come to learn, like uh, I showed just a step ago, and self-enroll. 
and then they are going through one piece of information at a time, so it's digestible and um, easy to process. And when they're done, they mark the module is completed. So it's really easy for them to come back to the spot where they left off. They just go to learning, click continue, and the app takes them to the exact page where they were. All right, and um, uh, in addition, you can use uh, quizzes, tests, and here's the way that you create them. Quizzes, uh, I, I was telling about quizzes before, so you can use them for, uh, as a part of a course, as the module uh, to check understanding, or they can be as a separate entity. So as a separate test uh, that you, um, you enroll a person to, <clears throat> uh, to make sure that they remember something that uh, they read, learned a while ago. So that's the way you create a course, the questions there. And uh, in addition to creating new stuff, you can reuse the questions that were created before. Enrollment works in the same way as the as it works in the course. So you just click Enroll Participant button and uh, the notification will be sent. Uh, there is some powerful configuration in settings of the quiz, so you can really make it uh, work the, the way you need that. For example, you can decide whether there'll be one attempt or several, whether the people will know the results, uh, whether they got it wrong after the after the answer to one question or at the end of the quiz, so it's really up to you. Uh, here's the link for the free trial of the app, and we have the demo site where you can come and try it without installing. So it, it has all the data for you. You can just come and play with it. Uh, and now a few words about remote onboarding. We're almost there, so just hang on there. Uh, so we'll have this opportunity for discussion. Just a few fun things that I wanted to share and a few insight and ideas that I have. So um, from my point of view, the major difficulties during digital onboarding when we are working remotely um, would be, it's difficult to build relationship, to learn about the culture of the company. And uh, we all know that it's, uh, it's really important. You know? It's not just how the person works, but how they fit in. And when we are constantly just uh, having the chats and Zoom calls, it's, it can be difficult to build that kind of relationship. It's harder to ask questions for the new people because they, uh, they don't see you, they don't know you, and uh, you are so far away. And they, they, don't want you, they don't want to bug you every now and then so they can you know, be really isolated and uh, uh, spending too much time on the things that uh, they should really ask and then move forward. And it's of course harder for the functional team to learn and uh, sorry, to educate the new person because they are remote. And what you could do, for example, uh, you could create uh, additional content. Well, here's an example of the uh, course that we set up from in Stillsoft. And that's the basic course with all the important information, important pages, such as how the vacations are organized. Of course, now we cannot go to vacation, but for the future, uh, how we can study English if we want to, and how we uh, go to business trips and uh, buy some licenses. So everything is aggregated in one place. And um, uh, it's not that big, only, you know, the major, major things. It's in Russian, so don't try to understand what it, what it says. Uh, you just get the idea from the structure. And uh, there will be the report where we see all the records of the people who are going through that, so it will be really informative for us. Another idea would be to create a course um, about people who you have on your teams and to make it really informal. Uh, so here we have divisions based on the job role. And um, here's an example of what a module could look like. So there could be the information about the, the person, what they do um, at work, as well as something really you know, individual, personal, like an intro, 
you can record a short intro about who you are, what you like, uh, and maybe have some uh, blog post there. For example, this is the blog post that uh, my colleague wrote about me and my role in the company, but you can also use the other kind of blog post. In our case, we have all the new people coming to the team create the blog post about themselves and it's usually so much fun so you can include it there and instead of people going uh, and browsing through the history of the spaces looking for that kind of fun stuff they will have it all in one place in that in that course um, you can also create pages uh, like that uh, with all the interesting things that you had before and it will be something that people will be looking forward to in this case, uh, this is the page for the uh, annual event that we have, uh, Nerd, uh, Nerd Rush. So it's a, a challenge that we have uh, in Stealthsoft and it usually includes bicycles and running five, 10 kilometers. So it's really challenging, but it's so much fun. And of course, during these days, you cannot do that. But if you share this information with the new hire, they will at least know that it's part of your life and that someday it will be available to them too. So they will know, you know, learn more about who you are as people, what you guys uh, like do in life besides work and can be really comforting, you know, during these days. Another idea would be a page about your internal uh, events. Uh, in this uh, example, I have hackathon uh, that we organize two times a year. And if you have something like that, you can also aggregate all the information on one page and have it set up like that. So here we have some cards showing all the hackathons of the past and some videos of the results of the work that people did. And usually those videos, they're so fun. So it's, uh, it would be a great uh, time for the new hire to go through that. And, you know, just to share about what you usually do at work, such as, you know, your guide office. And uh, uh, now when we are remote, so we can still engage. And it's really important to try and socialize and invite the uh, people who are joining your team to participate in the things that you do. For example, once we had this uh, cooking evening with the girls from work. So we joined and we made some desserts and it was fun. And you can, uh, you know, use this opportunity to have some kind of a relationship which is informal and um, out of work with a new person as well. And the great idea that I uh, read uh, in a lesson block would be a body. So uh, every new hire would have the person that they uh, have as a, like, you know, insider. Uh, somebody they can come and ask if it's, uh, okay to do this or that and how things work. And it would be the person of, uh, you know, reference every time that they need help. So it could be a really great practice, uh, I think, to try that, uh, to assign a body for the new, uh, for the new person and then um, engage, you know, with that practice as much as possible. Another idea that we had was to celebrate uh, a birthday remotely. Uh, so it was also fun and it's something that you can try and engage new people as well. Okay, so that's about it. And here's my email address if you'd like to contact me afterwards, if you'd like to discuss something in more detail, if you have questions or need help setting things up with the solutions that I showed you. And now I, I think we can uh, have discussion and you can ask your questions. So thank you. Thank you guys. Thank you very much, Katarina. So, uh, no questions in the Q and A. While I promote everybody to panelists, one question from me: um, Are you hiring? Have you been hiring during these times? So, do you have your own experience with that, with new hires that you haven't seen yet, that haven't been in the office even? Yeah, we do. We have this experience uh, in the team that I work uh, in. It's um, team of four people and we have two new people that were joining uh, during these times, but not exactly, you know, just right before. Uh, so in our team, we had the experience when we have to learn remotely and it's challenging. 
but in Stillsoft in general, we had a few people who were joining recently during the last maybe months or two. And uh, it's, it's a real challenge. It's a real challenge with uh, having people uh, asking you the questions when they have and uh, to uh, educate them timely. So uh, we use the confluence for sharing all the assets that we have, all the knowledge, and we create some articles. And we try to engage people as much as possible in our Slack and in Zoom meetings and have more, you know, uh, weekly uh, check-ins compared to the times before. So we really try to have more face-to-face um, -face communication and things like that. So everybody should now be able to unmute and also activate the video. Uh, if you have a question, just push a button and ask away. Yeah, Mia. No. Okay. Um, one question other question. Ah, from my side, Jörg. Yeah. Yes, yeah. So, sorry, the, so I, I will I will do the the video shortly, but I'm on a on a hike uh, <laughs> because because my my Apple Watch forced me to go go on a hike after work. <laughs> uh, Katarina, uh, you mentioned courses and quizzes, uh, and we're currently testing it for our onboarding scenario. Uh, um, you 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 had a test with the Pathways plugin for Confluence two. Sorry, we had the test. Uh, I didn't hear. I didn't hear the last part. Could you repeat? The pathways plugin. Uh, uh, awesome. Whether you tested the pathways plugin too? Um, the pathways. No, it's another. If you mean the other plugin from another vendor, uh, I, I didn't catch if you if you were asking if it's compatible or. No, if you tested that too in your onboarding. Process. Oh, so if it has pathways. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so the app doesn't have pathways right now. You can create courses and uh, uh, quizzes uh, and which a course can be a pathway because it's a combination of pages. Uh, we are looking into creating um, learning paths, which is a sort of a pathway or learning program, uh, which is a combination of courses and quizzes, but it's something that we have in our backlog, not in the app yet. Okay, uh, so, so, sounds great. And and did you really start it with a native Confluence page with a bunch of checkboxes and then you converted it to courses or you started uh, from the beginning with courses and quizzes? No, we didn't use checkboxes. Uh, it's just the approach which people can try if it works for them, but we use courses. Thanks. So from, from our experience at Scandio, uh, um, we started with a plain vanilla Confluence page with checkboxes and it shows after a year or so that it is not enough. And with an add-on like uh, uh, courses and quizzes, um, it's, yeah, you, you can transport more detailed information about your processes in the company and about the company itself. So, so from our side, we recommend to start with such tools like uh, uh, courses and quizzes. Yeah, automation is really helpful and the reporting side uh, in any kind of tool like that, I understand that vanilla pages with checkboxes can be challenged, especially on the long run. So thank you for sharing. Maybe if you don't have questions, you can just tell us uh, uh, what kind of uh, challenges you face, uh, what your experience with, what your experience is with onboarding. So it would be really helpful. That's a good question. Has anybody else been hiring during these times and had to organize something remotely and wants to share their experiences? Anybody? If you tell so, me to cut. So we've onboarded from March to April, uh, uh, and today the last one, four new colleagues. Uh, um, and it worked nearly the same as we, if we are in the office, because 
we have that uh, uh, checklists and tools in Confluence and, and Slack, of course, and, and, and Zoom and whatever. It seems to be pretty straightforward. Nice. And how do you arrange all the learning? I mean, uh, with the checklists, you can really trace all the things that people need to do. But uh, what about like learning, educating them remotely about how to use things and about your processes? So at Scandio, this is part of the teams. So what, what we do from a, from a, let's say, back office point of view, we, we tell them about the processes, about the standard processes at Scandio. Um, and after the first day, we hand them over to the teams and they have a learning plan for the person for its own. And the size of the team is very limited. So we have teams between four and 10 people. Um, and then they uh, have the duty to do the technical education, let's say. I see. Maybe somebody else would like to share. Hmm. No, everybody's shy. Nobody wants to share. Um, I have another question, Katharina. Um, yeah. For the content. Do, do you help your customers set up the content for, do you have best practices that you are sharing with your customers or is that just selling the app basically? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, so uh, the content of the learning, it doesn't come with the app. Uh, the app brings you the opportunity that you can create courses and quizzes. But as for best practices, uh, we usually share them during the calls when we have some intro calls with the clients, some demos, and we have some tips in our documentation so yeah, we try to uh, educate people how to make the most of, out of the app. Okay. Any other questions? Do you have any experiences with scalability? So does it scale from 10 employees to 1000 employees or is there anything that you need to keep in mind if you have, let's say 100 new hires a month or something? So is there a difference? Mm -hmm. How, do, how, does, how does it scale? So. Yeah, we have some customers who already use the app for uh, hundreds, I would say even thousands of uh, um, employees. And usually it's ongoing training, not, not onboarding, because onboarding is usually like something smaller when they have a few people joining a team. And for ongoing uh, training about product knowledge, it's usually for salespeople. Uh, when they uh, need, need to be informed about something new uh, in the panel of the products, uh, some changes, they uh, use tests for checking understanding. And uh, uh, what I've noticed is that um, sometimes it takes, uh, it's challenging for the creators because uh, they do their best, you know, to create uh, uh, really clear questions and um, some engaging material, but people fail. And uh, the, one of the biggest challenges, I would say, is for the creators uh, to really um, get the, like, you know, uh, best approach, how to formulate questions and answer options so that the majority of people don't make like stupid mistakes, not because of the lack of knowledge, but maybe lack of attention, things like that. And that's a period when you used uh, like hours for creating a test with 100 questions, but then people fail. So that's one of the challenges that creators face. As for like, scalability on the app side, uh, we didn't have any you know, such problems or issues. So I don't, okay. I don't really have anything to share about that. Okay, so it's really ideal also if you have a thousand people and need something to, to roll out the new product quickly, you can do that and it works and it, it's, uh, your experiences are that it scales to any yeah, size, sure. basically. So, perfect. Yeah, and um, I, I would also like to say that it's uh, not just our app. Of course, it's uh, our app, and I would like to uh, you to try that. But uh, there are many tools out there, and uh, the major idea is just to be open, flexible, and keep it going with onboarding process. I know that some companies they use Trello, and Trello they have some. Uh, free templates for boards, and it's also a great solution. So, and it scales greatly 
Mm, it's just, you know, you're, you're being open and uh, understanding the importance of this process. Yeah, the tool, it doesn't really matter. Um, any other questions? No. There, there was something in chat. Uh, just that somebody had to go and. Oh, thank okay. You. Okay. No. Here, there's a uh, here's a question. Do you have, do you have use cases to integrate it with third-party applications like Safari books, LinkedIn, learning, LinkedIn learning, Moodle, etc. So using Moodle or LinkedIn learning yeah. with your app. Yes, it's a very interesting area. Um, so far, we don't integrate with such tools, uh, but we are planning to add SCORM compatibility. And I know that the majority of uh, learning tools out there, they support that. So um, when we have that, then we will be compatible and we'll be able to integrate with um, Moodle and other things. But uh, I, I wouldn't call it like integration, more of a uh, the ability to use the content that you create elsewhere in Moodle, for example you would then export it in SCORM and um, import it in our app as a package. Okay. Does that answer the question? Does, yeah, seems like it. Okay. Uh, any other questions via chat or live? No. Going once. <laughs> Going twice. And gone. Thank you, everybody. Solved. Thank you, Katarina, for this. Thank it was you. very Thank educational. So um, and just re a short reminder for everybody that we will be back on Monday with uh, Sven Shuttle from Lively Apps. And the topic will be let's build an integration framework for conference. So that would be a nice, let's say, next topic to this one how to get more data into your onboarding process, for example. Um, and of course, we are partnering with No Cabin Fever today. Uh, at No Cabin Fever today, you can find a talk for every day of the week at 4 p.m. And uh, if you want to learn something, check out their website and register. With that, again, thank you, Katarina. Have thank a nice evening. Have a nice evening. Have a nice weekend. Uh, stay safe. You too. Thank you. Bye. And uh, hope to see you in person very soon. Goodbye. Yeah. Bye.